So welcome to Budget Stair Renovation Part 2. So as you remember from the last video, um, we removed the spindles, which is still on the floor, um, and we've started removing the stuff. So to explain what we're doing, um, so a bit of a recap, we're gonna have glass panels in these openings. We're gonna rub down all of the new posts, handrails, base rails, side pieces, carpet, and uh, and then obviously we're going for glass in there, one panel, two panels there with um, with gaps. So what we need to do now is get the rubbing down started. So what we're using is 60 grit, as you can see there, P60. Now it's quite coarse, um, but what the goal is, we want to take off this top layer of stain or, or whatever it is, varnish. Like I've said in my last video, I know nothing about wood um, and the oils and the staining and whatever varnish, whatever it is. So what we've done here is use 60 grit. What this has done is help take it back to its natural color. There's still, this is just a practice run and same with this. So it's not the final and it's quite dusty. Um, so the plan is to 60 grit everything get rid of that horrible dark color, and then look to finish it down with a higher grit sandpaper. So for those that don't know, higher the grit, the finer it is, and the like sort of the finishing. Um, so we may go up to like 120 grit, maybe even higher 200 grit or 240, whatever there is, um, just to finish it down before looking to finish it. Um, I've no idea how we're gonna finish it. We probably want to keep it as natural as we can. Maybe something with a slight tinge, but we really want it as light as possible because it's a dark room and want to make it, and that's the goal, as light as possible. Um, actually, just removing the spindles has helped massively. But yeah, so this video is going to be a bit heavy on time lapse, um, but we'll uh, get sanding. We're only doing to the floor above until we decorate the, the uh, landing and upwards. So, um, yeah, we need to get sanded and uh, take it from there. So uh, I'll get it stripped down and um, we'll just crack on and do what we can. So what a tedious job this is proving to be. Uh, we're on day two. I've just, as you'll have seen from the time lapse, got majority of this done. Some of that, I think it's gonna need another run over. And then I've made a start on these as well. Um, as you can see these lines, I think what I've found is that the, the machines because of the footprint of them, they sort of they don't follow the contour of the the wood, um, so it's leaving them bits which I may have to do by hand. Um, so we'll see. Um, but it obviously doesn't look like much, but there's a massive difference there, um, all the way down. And then obviously you can see there that's where it were before. And uh, see if there's any bits. Yeah. So you can see. Drastic difference, bringing back that oak, and um, gonna do that one. Um, but today, what I'd like to get done is the um, all the bottom bits. Try and get the handrail done if I can. Um, got another couple of hours left tonight that I can get done, um, and just chew away at it. It's it's gonna be tedious, I know that. So um, I'm just trying to use the right tools. Um, I think to get in the corners. I'm going to use my Ryobi multi-tool with this attachment on and that should help me get in the corners. Um, but yeah, so far I'm using 60 grit 
um, sandpaper and it's doing it but I might see if there's something better that uh, bites a bit a bit more but we get in there I'm getting the hang of it I'm getting the hang of that orbital sander there um, it's just one of the things isn't it? it's it's a slow process and it's going to take time but we need a good finish this is going to be a bit of a focal point when you walk in the house so um, yeah we need it to be good so um, I'll plough on Keep the uh, GoPro going and uh, see how we get on. Um, if there's any suggestions you've got, please do pop them down in the comments below. Um, this is the first time I'm doing this um, and, and as you can see from the title, it's a budget refurb. We can't afford to replace them. It's £2,000 to replace all the way to the top. Um, so uh, yeah, we'll uh, soldier on through. And We're making progress. Um, so we've took the handrail off up there and the null post there rubbed down just here, there, and then the null post there, look. Um, so I've given that a quick once over, but the base rail above it I've took off. Um, I've also managed to get that null post and some of that done, um, but that's gonna need another go over. But I've just got the base rail here, so I thought I'd talk you through what I'm doing. So, as you can see, the orbital sander, which is this little machine, getting ready for a new disc, is fine for the flat edges, this, that side and underneath. But in these curves here, so as you can see there, there's still the stain. So what I've been doing, taking a fresh bit of sandpaper, literally, putting it in and doing that. It's a tedious job, um, but it actually goes quite well. I'm using, oh, where is it? Let's see if it says it anywhere. Oh, normally it says it on the back, but I'm using 80, 60 grit uh, sandpaper, and it's actually doing um, a grand job. I'm using 50 grit on the orbital sander, um, and that's just chewing into the major bits. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to get this done, then I'm going to concentrate on getting these 100%, there's just a bit on this edge I want to get done, and then I'm going to get that null post done and dusted, get these edges done, uh, and the same on this side, and then uh, it's time to concentrate on getting that up to a good standard. Um, I've also just had to play around with some um, varnish or oil, I think it is. This Osmo stuff. Um, loads of people have recommended it, so I'm going to give it a try. Um, this is the uh, clear matte. Um, I'm not a fan of shiny things. Uh, I think matte finish gives a really clean look. So, as you can see there, that's it. It's still drying, um, but that's uh, sort of before and that's it after. Now what I believe you do, I'm not 100% so don't quote me on this at the moment, is um, give it a light sand down once it's dry after I think a few days. Uh, let it dry out soak in and then apply another coat. Um, as you can see, yes it's darker than that, uh, but it's nowhere near as dark as that. So as what it were before. Um, so what I'm thinking, um, maybe trying the natural one um, just to see how dark it goes because we don't want it dark as, as I've said before it's not the goal of this uh, but yeah so I'm getting tired now and um, as you can probably tell in my voice um, but can't stop gotta keep going and uh, 
just get it done. So um, yeah, if, if by the end of today, I can get these first treads done, sort of base rail, handrail, I think I'll be happy with that. So um, that's the goal and I'll keep plowing on. We're now at, um, I think it's about one o'clock. So uh, I'm going out for a meal later. So yeah, we're uh, limited with time, but we'll get what we can done. Um, and uh, yeah, so crack on. Stage one of sanding is complete. So we've gone over the whole stairs. Well, the first two flights, because we've obviously got third and floor, fourth, um, with 60 grit um, sandpaper. So that 60 grit, um, it comes in various ones. So I've bought these. So 60 grit, you see there, it's quite coarse. And then we go, well, we've got 40 grit here, which is more coarse than the 60. And then we've got a finer one which is 120 grit. So I've done the majority of the stairs in a 60 grit. Um, and something I've learned with doing this is buy quality sanding discs or um, sandpaper. Um, I've found the, I think it's called Oakley or Oakey um, sandpaper to be very good. Um, and also the Norton um, abrasive sandpaper to be good. I bought some from Screwfix, not very good, and I can't remember what it's called. I'm just trying to find it. Um, something, and there we go. Flex of it, not very not very effective at all. Um, so, a bit of a waste of money for that one. But um, yeah, so we've done 60 grit everywhere. And as you can see, it's brought the color back. We've obviously left the treads because we're carpeting. But as you can see, um, the color difference. There you go, um, it's night and day. We've done the, the new post there, as you can see, and um, it's brought it back to a lovely natural oak color. Something I never thought would be possible. Um, that's just the lighting I've found. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's looking fantastic. Um, so now, stage two of the sanding, Gonna be very repetitive on the time lapse front, but we need to go over it with a finer grit. And the reason being, um, and I'm I'm sort of taking this back to the like car body shop type thing. Um, by using 60 grit, you you're creating scratches to remove the sort of stain and the colour. So what we need to do now, that is in a very raw state at the minute, is use a 120 grit, um, which is a much finer uh, paper. Uh, well, like double as fine, if that's a, a thing, um, just to smoothen the finish out. And hopefully, I'd, I'm not sure what to expect. Um, as I've said previously, this is the first time doing it, um, but hopefully it will improve the finish. So what we're gonna do is, it's gonna be a much quicker job. We haven't got all the nuts and crannies to get in really, um, but we need to get all this up here done, up to the to this, uh, first floor. And uh, we'll do that with the 120 grit. I'm using the orbital sander still and the Ryobi multi-tools come in handy as well. I'll go through the tools at the end of this. Um, but yeah, so that's the job now. Um, and I think that's about it. Just need to get cracking and uh, let's try and get it in a position by the end of this video to um, that we're ready for sort of finishing off. I've ordered the wood um, to support the glass so that we can reuse the existing base rails. Um, and I'll, I'll probably talk through that in the next video. So, um, so yeah, I'm gonna get going. I wanna get this done. So um, yeah, time lapse it is and uh, we'll crack on.
And that completes the staircase sanding renovation thing. Um, so I've gone over all 120 grit and um, it really has made a massive difference. Um, these I bought as white American, uh, American white oak caps and now they match in absolutely perfect. Um, following the 60 grit, something I noticed with the cheaper um, sanding disc um, and which is why I mentioned it earlier on uh, for the difference is it left loads of orange which the 120 grit has really uh, took it out and brought it back to its <clears throat> original natural colour um, so I'm a bit bummed as such that uh, we didn't use the Makita 60 grit to start with um, but you live and learn it will make doing the second, uh, the third and fourth flights of stairs much easier. Um, but yeah, the 120 grit Makita sanding disc, night and day difference. So um, I'm glad I found them and it's made uh, doing the final pass so much easier. So what I want to do is touch on the tools I've uh, used for this. Um, probably be beneficial if you need to go out and buy them. Um, I know I've had to and um, yeah, so I've had to buy all the stuff. So. I'll talk you through what I've used and uh, take it from there. So for the sanding, um, I think it's key to get as many sort of handy tools as you can. Um, I appreciate there's a budget. Uh, I'm working to a budget on this, so um, you can't just go out and buy everything. Fortunately, my dad had one of these. I already had this and it was just a case of buying the uh, sort of consumables for that. So starting with sort of getting rid of the bulk of the stain, um, as you'll have seen, and I'll pop a video in, a picture in now of how orange it were before. So to remove that, we went for a 60 grit sandpaper. So that's what that dictates. Now, I didn't go for that, unfortunately. I bought these, um, that says 50, but I did use a 60 grit version, um, and it just, it weren't biting. It, it got through it, I mean, it's done the majority of the stairs, but it just weren't very good. So I wouldn't recommend them. I would say buy a premium brand, uh, something like these, or um, these Merca ones, but I struggle to find where to buy them. So these are 125 mil, and that's to suit the orbital sander. Now, I'm not 100% sure an orbital sander is the right way to go. Um, it has worked for me. A bit awkward to get in certain places, um, but it's certainly done the majority and the bulk of the sanding um, and made it much, much easier and less hard work. Now, if to do it manually, you would be looking at something like this, uh, just a sanding block with, uh, normally you would cut that edge off, but we just quickly did it with some 40 grit. Um, that has been a godsend for um, doing sort of areas like that up there and uh, just bits you can't quite get to that you just want to sort of feel what you're doing um and the sandpaper for that again 60 grit um now this is 120 but i've used the same oaky um 60 grit and to be honest fantastic stuff i got this from school fix and uh it's been an absolute godsend again that's 120 grit but i've also used um, and i don't think i have any to hand but the stuff on there is a, um, it's called Norton Abrasives from B&Q. And again, no issues with that either. So what I think the moral of the story is for me is always go premium brand, try and avoid um, going for the cheap stuff. It's normally only like one or two pound cheaper, but it can potentially save you hours in work. Um, and hard work as well at that so so yeah i think that's something a bit of a lessons learned for me um and then the other tool which has proven absolute amazement is this is the ryobi multi-tool now don't get me wrong uh, there is other multi-tools out there that will do the exact same job so this i've never actually used it for this and i've had this probably five years now um where it has this triangle bit on it that then you can stick whatever grit so 80 grit there uh, on it and it's absolutely brilliant for getting up there 
getting around there, getting in sort of these areas and just doing the bits that the orbital sander couldn't get to or if you had large amounts um, then that would be the go-to simply to save your hands uh, when sort of that's your other option. So areas that we use the multi-tool were things like up there, great for getting around that curve and, uh, and not affecting the new coving that we've put up. Um, so yeah, and then the other sort of tool I would suggest is very makeshift. Now, what I've found is you'll never have the right tool for every sort of eventuality. So I had a block of wood just laid about and I nailed some sandpaper. And the reason for that was to get in areas down there. So I could simply go like that. Now, this were longer and I made a bit of a handle for it. Um, so it saved me heartache and uh, sore fingers for getting in that sort of area. So yeah, I think you need to be open-minded with what you're using, uh, try and adapt and overcome. Um, what's the saying? Work smarter, not harder. So uh, yeah, that's what I would suggest. And um, yeah, so I hope, I hope it's been beneficial. A bit long-winded video, um, simply given what it is, tedious job. It's been probably now, uh, I think we're on for seven days of about 15 hours. Um, I have a full-time job, so obviously this is done in evenings, two or three hours a night um, around very busy work. But I think take your time and uh, you will achieve very similar results. So the next step is to order the wood. Um, it is, I have ordered it, it's on its way. And the wood is to allow glass to sit in there. Um, so that'll come within the next week or so. Then we need to look at getting the staircase oiled. Um, now, I'm not sure that whether varnish or oil is the right way to go. Um, lots of people say oil, um, but I'm not sure. So I need to do a bit of research into that. Um, so if you do know, drop a comment in the comment box below. And um, yeah, so then it's onto the glass. Now, as you can see, we are sort of doing other works. Um, so I'm gonna get all this done before I do the oil and the um, and the glass. So that may come in a few, few months or so time. So yeah, I hope you found it useful. Please do like if you did and subscribe um, for more videos of, of similar nature. And also go and check out the Instagram account, newbuild underscore DIY underscore journey, um, just to see behind the scenes, day-to-day -day posts on uh, and what we're up to and how we're changing our house. So um, yeah, thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you in the next one.